New Hope TV, your encounter with God. Hallelujah. In the last episode, we heard about how the Father is so keen to give you kingdom, the kingdom of God, and along with it, all the kingdom authority and all the prosperity, everything God has kept in store, actually the inheritor of the kingdom of God. You become an inheritor of the kingdom of God. How? You become, because you are a son and a daughter of God. It is such a great news to understand. When you read, I'll take you through a little bit of scripture uh, in the book of Romans chapter 8. And my dear brother, my dear sister, we must, uh, we must read the word of God. Most important because that is Jesus Christ himself. God wants to communicate to his children through the word of God. And the word of God is Jesus himself. So God wants to communicate to you. The father wants to communicate to you through his son Jesus. And let's go into the word of God in the book of Romans chapter 8. I want to take you through a little bit of scripture. And just to understand how, what is the mind of God. How often we are not able to comprehend the mind of God. That is why it says very clearly in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9, it says, I has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has a human heart perceived what God has kept in store for those who love him. But verse 10 says, but we, we have a revelation knowledge of that because the Holy Spirit of the living God has revealed to us. Hallelujah. And that revelation is talked about here again. The book of Romans chapter 8 verse 14 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. So one of the qualifications or the conditions to be a son and a daughter of God is that you must be led by the Spirit of God. That is, you are led by the Spirit of the living God. All your actions, you are under the, you are under the control and uh, the dominion of the, law, uh, of the Holy Spirit of the living God. That is why, you know, it is so important for us to be submitted to the Holy Spirit. And it is only the Holy Spirit, that presence of the Holy Spirit in us, that confirms that you and I are sons and daughters of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Again, verse 15 says, For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. So, once the Spirit of the living God comes into us, there is a liberty because the word of God says again in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 says where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty. So you have been set free. Set free from bondage. Several types of bondages are there. One of the greatest bondages is bondage of religion, of tradition, of rules, rites, rituals, laws. All these things are contrary to uh, the, 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 the grace, the mercy and the compassion of God. So you need to understand Please don't misunderstand. When I say law, I don't mean the Ten Commandments are bad. Please don't misunderstand. Ten Commandments are good, good, good. It is given by God, yes. But the problem is that if you are depending upon the Ten Commandments, the law given to Moses on stone tablets, then you will never ever be able to obey 100%. Or you will never be able to stand or live a life without transgressing even one of those laws, even one time in your whole life. The minute you transgress, you are a sinner. And the wages of sin is death. That is why your dependence on the law for salvation, that is what Jesus took away. Please don't misunderstand. Some people, you know, interpret saying that, you know, the old covenant, the laws are not applicable now. Certainly it is applicable to you. But the problem is that you cannot be saved because you will sin. Man, because that's why God's word says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And if all have sinned, then the wages of your sin is death. So Jesus came into this world not to set aside the law, but to fulfill it. And the fulfillment of that is, you and I sin, your wages is death, but Jesus Christ took that death, that sentence, that punishment upon himself. That is a new covenant. A covenant based on love, on grace, on mercy, on compassion. The substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus at the cross of Calvary. My dear brother, my dear sister, this is what a believer needs to really understand. This is what a believer needs to have a revelation. So here we find that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but he has given us a spirit of adoption by which we cry out our, our, our father. So there is a new revelation that you and I get. That now I have a new father, not a new father, a father who has loved me so much that he has redeemed me from the clutches of the sin and bondage and death of my earlier father. You read John 8, 44, you will find out who your earlier father was. Please write it down. There is no time to go. Otherwise, we will be you know, going away from the main topic. 
John 8, 44. Please read it. Hallelujah. So, he has given us a spirit of adoption. So, he has made us accept it. When you read the word, again, I, I'll just briefly take you to the word of God in the book of Ephesians chapter 1, verse 6. It says, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. In the beloved is Jesus. So, you and I are accepted by the Father as adopted sons and daughters by Jesus Christ. So, Jesus is the way. That is why he says, I am the way, the truth and the life. And no one can come to the Father except through me. My dear brother, my dear sister, believe this. No religion, no law, no rituals, no tradition, nothing, no man, no, no institution, no church can save you. There is only one person. One person that can save you, his name is Jesus. He's a savior of the world. That is why he, one has to take away the sin to become a savior. He's saving you from what? He's saving you from death. He's saving from eternal damnation. That is why John introduced Jesus. In the Gospel of John 1.29, he says, Behold the Lamb of God who taketh away the sin of the world. It is not he cancelled the sin of the world. He taketh away the sin of the world from you. And he take it upon himself. Hallelujah. That is why 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 says, He who knew no sin was made sin for us, that you and I might become the righteousness of God in him. So there is a spirit of adoption by which, so you and I are no longer the uh, children of the devil, but we become the children of God. And then the next verse, uh, 16 says, Who has given us this knowledge? Who has given us? No preacher can give you this knowledge. It will never stay. It will never avail of anything. If, you're, if man is teaching you, the Holy Spirit has to teach you, my dear brother, my dear sister. That is why the book of John chapter 6 verse 45 says, Hallelujah, everyone shall be taught by God and it is such as are taught by the Father that comes to Jesus. So without the revelation knowledge and the wisdom that the Lord gives us, you will never ever be able to accept Jesus as your Savior. You will have an intellectual knowledge. You may be a philosopher, you may be a theologian, you may write many books, you may get a PhD even, but you will never have Jesus in your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't need any big, big, uh, you know, uh, intelligence or qualifications to know Jesus. Actually, Jesus says, it is a, unless you are like a little child, you can never come enter into the kingdom of God. You need simplicity. Because the word of God is simple. simple. Hallelujah. It talks about in the book of Corinthians, it says, the simplicity and the purity of Christ. People make it complicated. Hallelujah. They make it so complicated that the ordinary person is not able to comprehend it. And then, because it is made so complicated, he then gives up the trying to understand the word of God. And then he relies upon these teachers, these preachers, these theologians, these philosophers. My, please don't misunderstand, misunderstand. Preachers and teachers are all good. Provided they speak the word of God correctly, without any dilution or any addition or subtraction. They speak the pure word of God. Hallelujah. So, what I want to say is that there is a revelation knowledge. Who gave you that? That is verse 16 says, The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. So the revelation that we are children of God. So once you are children of God, you are sons and daughters of the King of Kings. Hallelujah. You know, you know Jacob, his name is Jacob, was a deceiver. But God changed his name to Israel. Israel, the translation is prince and princess with God. So once you come into the being a son and a daughter of God, you get all the authority of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That is why I told you, once your relationship changes, once you are under the Lordship of Jesus, you are entitled to, you are empowered to live a victorious Christian life. Because your father is Abba Father. Yahweh is your father. Jesus is your brother. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is your helper, your advocate, your counselor, your whatever you need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatever you need, the Holy Spirit is there. Hallelujah. So it says, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Then comes the main thing. You need to understand. If that relationship is there, by adoption, you know, under, even under the normal uh, uh, the laws of the land, once you adopt someone, that adopted son or daughter has equal rights to the biological daughter, son or daughter. Are you with me? Hallelujah. So, it says, uh, and if children, then heirs. Heirs of God and joined heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with them, that we may also be glorified together with him. Amen. So this is one thing you need to understand. That once I am adopted, hallelujah, once I am a son or a daughter of God, then I am a heir. Because Jesus is my elder brother. When you read the word in the book of Hebrews, 
chapter 2, very clearly says that he is not ashamed. I think I'll just take you to that. Hallelujah, the book of Hebrews. My dear brother, my dear sister, read the word of God. You will fall in love with the word of God. Hallelujah. For it says very clearly, uh, Hebrews chapter 2 verse 10 says, For it is fitting for him, for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons to glory, to make the to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. Then it says, For both he who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified are all of one, and for which reason he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Are you with me? Hallelujah. So Jesus is not ashamed to call you and me brother and sister. Are you with me, my dear brother? This is the status into which God has raised you up. Hallelujah. So you are expected to live a victorious Christian life. Some people are so content. So if you ask them, how, how are things? They say so-so, just managing, uh, just surviving, okay. No, you change your even attitude. If you know that you are the son of God, you say good. By the grace, of course, you say by the grace of God. Eh? Good by the grace of God. Fantastic. Because even when you, even in your circumstances, not all that good or fantastic, but if you proclaim that it is good and it is fantastic, God's word says very clearly in the book of Matthew chapter 9, it will happen to you according to your belief. Can you say an amen to that? Amen, amen. Amen means that you agree with that. Yes. So, the words that you proclaim are powerful. When God created light, and you read the book of Genesis chapter 1, he says, let there be light, and there was light. Today, God has given us the same authority to speak over situations, circumstances. Yes, mountains will move if you say with faith. Hallelujah. We are not digressing, but I need to, I am inspired to take you, we will keep this, mark this. We will go to one word in the book of Mark chapter 11. Hallelujah. The book of Mark chapter 11. Hallelujah. What a, what a prophetic confirmation is that when you speak. Hallelujah. My dear brother, my dear sister, I think as a believer you need to start speaking. Uh, hallelujah. Some people feel that being very silent is, is, and holy is what God wants. No. He wants you to speak. He wants you to speak. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Book of Mark chapter 11, verse 22, 23, 24. I'll just read it out quickly. It says, So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. That is the only condition. Faith triggers the dunamis power of God. It's almost like there is the, 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 the logo, that is the word, written word. It's assumed that is dynamite. When faith comes into it, it is as though that dynamite is lit and then it explodes into the Rima word of God. And there the dunamis power of that word is demonstrated. Hallelujah. It says, have faith in God. For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, can you please say says, sir? says to this mountain. I'm not talking of uh, Mount Everest and you go there and tell Mount Everest to move. No. These mountains are barriers which prevent you from going forward. These barriers which prevent you from appropriating your blessing. These barriers which is circling you and, and, and captivating you or imprisoning you. Bondages. Are you with me? These are the things which are mountains which prevent you from going forward. So the word of God says, you speak to that mountain. It may be an illness, it may be a financial problem, it may be a relationship problem, it may be anything. I don't know what your problem is. But whatever is the problem, there is nothing impossible for our God. So he says, you say to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea. You say with authority, hallelujah. And does not doubt in his heart. This is the most important thing, doubt in his heart. But believes that those things he says... Say once more, says, says, speak, says, will be done. He will have whatever he says. Say, says once more, says. Amen. So in this one word, it said three times the word says. So it shows how important it is for you to speak out the word in faith. It is not just, uh, you know, having it in your mind in faith or just murmuring in faith. No, you must open your mouth and speak because the devil cannot Hallelujah, our illness which has come not of God cannot hear or understand what you are thinking or murmuring in your mouth. No, in your mind. You can, you know, I can say right now, I said the mountain be removed. Nobody hears it. 
But you have to speak to that mountain. You say, mountain, be removed and cast into the sea. According to the covenant promise of God. I command you because I've got authority to say that. You have to speak to your problem. And it says so four times. Then the verse 24 says, Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. You just believe. You will have them. Such a, I mean, uh, another word I want to take you to is the book of Hebrews chapter 4. How important it is for faith, my dear brother, my dear sister. It is not an intellectual knowledge. Faith is not an intellectual It's an experience. Faith is something you experience. Hallelujah. The word of God says in the book of Hebrews chapter 4. Hallelujah. I'll read out verse 2 and 3. Part of 3. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard did not profit them. Not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. Not being mixed with faith. Are you with me? Not being mixed with faith. So the words that you hear, you have to mix it with faith. Actually, you have to give the dynamis power to explode. You have to mix with faith. Faith ignites the word of God. Faith turns the logo into Rima. Hallelujah. And then it says, they did not profit because they did not mix it with faith. Verse 4 says, for we have believed, we who believed do enter the rest. I mean, the balance I'm not reading. But those who believed, they were able to enter the rest. Appropriate the rest that the Lord gave. But those who did not believe, nothing happened. So today I urge you, my dear brother, my dear sister, as you're listening to these words, I urge you, change your mindset. Believe in God's word. Because God's word is for fulfillment. I want to tell you, take you to one, one, just one word. In the book of Luke chapter 1, verse 45. He says very clearly, Blessed is she who believed for there will be fulfillment of all the things spoken to her by the Lord. Amen. So all that you need is to believe. And what is spoken by the Lord is here in the scripture. So if you believe in the scripture, what the Lord has spoken to you, hallelujah, through the Holy Spirit, using the medium of various uh, uh, men of God all over a period of time, it is God speaking to us. And if you believe that, there will be fulfillment of it. 100%. Because there is nothing impossible for God. So today I urge you, my dear brother, my dear sister, when you read God's word, believe. Believe. It is the, 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 the creator of the whole universe who is giving you the assurance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it goes on to say, uh, that is the book of Romans chapter 8, we are coming back to that. 8 verse 17, it says, And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and join heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified with them together. Amen. So this is such a great promise that we are co-heirs with Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. So the Father, I want to tell you, is so keen to give you king, the kingdom. And along with the kingdom, everything that belongs to the king becomes yours. Are you with me? It becomes yours. That is why God is, I mean, uh, expressing his desire through the word of God in the book of Luke chapter 12, verse 32. The book of Luke, chapter 12, verse 32 says very clearly, Hallelujah, I, I wish you will receive it in faith, my dear brother, my dear sister. Hallelujah. 32 says, Hallelujah. I'll take you to 31. But seek the kingdom of God and all these things. Maybe you should go to, I mean, you read from uh, 22 onwards. It talks about don't worry about anything. Don't, don't worry about anything. And uh, 32 says, do not fear little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. 32 is giving you an assurance that the father, Yahweh, is so pleased to give you the kingdom. He's not grudgingly giving you. Because you are a son. Do you grudgingly give anything to your children? No. You give it lovingly and you wish he would take more. Like, you know, when your children eat. Hallelujah. You don't grudgingly give them something to eat. But you wish they will eat some more. He said, a good parent. I'm talking about a good parent. Hallelujah. So you need to understand, the Father wants to bestow upon us so much of blessings. And every blessing comes from the kingdom of God. And that is why he says, do not fear little flock. Have no fear at all. I'm telling you, my dear brother, my dear sister, whatever the circumstance that you are facing, I want to assure you that once you surrender your life to Jesus, once you come under his lordship, you will lack nothing. Psalm 23 verse 1 very clearly says that. You will lack nothing. You will lack nothing. Say, can you say, I will lack nothing. I think you should say actually the full thing. The Lord is my shepherd. I will lack nothing. Can you please repeat it? 
the Lord is my shepherd, I will lack nothing. Amen. Once you proclaim that itself in faith, it will trigger that everything that you lack, the lack, the, 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 the lack will be fulfilled or rather <laughs> taken away. Hallelujah. There will be no more lack. So it says, do not fear little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He is so happy to give you the kingdom. Because you and I are little children. He says, little children. Are you with me? This is, you need to understand, when you read God's word, you must meditate upon the word. Not just read it like a novel. Some people have this habit, uh, I mean, I don't know, I, I mean, I, I never fell into that trap of read, saying, you know, coming into some sort of a thing where you read the whole gospel in uh, six months, the whole gospel in, um, in uh, one year, and for that purpose they give some sort of a timetable, and then you read it. It becomes something like an exercise. Almost not an exercise, actually it becomes like an imposition. You know, when you were a children in school, we all had imposition. You do something right or I mean, wrong, you write something wrong, the teacher will say, okay, write this hundred times. Are you with me? So reading the gospel like that is not going to avail you of anything. It is only an imposition. It is in the flesh and it profits nothing. But when you read the word of God, the word of God says very clearly, what should be your attitude? Let's go to the book of Joshua chapter 1. Hallelujah. He says very clearly, verse 8, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, which means you shall always proclaim the word of the law, word of God, but you shall meditate in it day and night. Meditate not on it. See, all the intellectuals, the philosophers and the theologians will meditate on the word. So you can like, you can, you know, it's like almost like swimming. You can sit on the side of the swimming pool and then you can theoretically decide how to swim. Are you with me? They are meditating on it. How to swim. Meditating on the word of God. Giving explanations and interpretations of the word of God. But it says meditate in it. Inside it. Which means you have to dive into the water. And then you can swim in the water. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Like we know in the scripture it says the water, the river that flew flowed from the temple. First it covered the ankle, then it covered the knee, then it covered the waist, then it went higher than one had to swim in it. So similarly, the anointing of God should take you into great depths because the word of God itself says the, 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 the deep secrets of God. You have to swim in the word. You have to dive into the word. And then only there will be revelation knowledge. Otherwise there will be intellectual knowledge of the word which will not avail you anything. But revelation knowledge is what the church... That's why Ephesians 1, hallelujah, very clearly talks about that the church today needs the spirit of wisdom and of revelation, of the knowledge of him, and therefore the eyes of your understanding can be enlightened. And therefore you will be able to know what is the hope of your calling, the glory that is waiting to be revealed in you, who are his inheritance, and the exceeding greatness of the power of the Holy Spirit that is working in you, which is the same power, same spirit who raised Jesus from the dead. Amen, amen. It's all, I'm just taking, paraphrasing it from the word of God. Hallelujah. So it goes on to say, you shall meditate, because Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, and you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success next verse says have i not commanded you be strong and of good courage strong of good courage do not be afraid nor be dismayed for the lord your god is with you wherever you go hallelujah 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 i want to tell you my dear brother my dear sister when you are dived into the word then you are in the word, you are in Christ. Are you with me? You are in Christ. So when you go, actually the Christ is what can be seen. You are inside. Hallelujah. Just like, uh, take for an example, when you say you are in Christ, hallelujah. Take this uh, marker, okay? This marker, you can see it now. Hallelujah. You can see the marker. But I put the marker here in the word of God, which is Jesus Christ himself. And I close it. Hallelujah. Now the marker is in Christ. In the word of God. So when I show this, you don't see the marker, but you see the word of God. 
GC Jesus. Hallelujah. So you say it very clearly. And I want to tell you, if you believe in God's word, if you receive God's word in faith, he said, you, this is your covenant promise. Have I not commanded you, be strong and have good courage. He wants you to be victorious. He wants you to be strong. And he wants you to be courageous. Do not be afraid. There is no fear. Fear is not, nothing. should never come and disturb you. Do not be dismayed for what? It's not my strength. He says, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So the Lord your God is with you. And if that be the case, I want to take you to one word in the, prior to this, which is there. Hallelujah. Verse 5 of Joshua 1. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. My dear brother, my sister, is there a greater covenant promise that you need? That you need more than this? The creator of the universe is telling you, do not be afraid. He says, no man shall be able to stand before you. That means oppose you. All the days of your life. It is not for a time or a season. All the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. This word was addressed to Joshua. But you need to understand, Joshua had a, a purpose to be accomplished for the Lord. He was chosen to lead the people from the desert into the chosen, into the promised land. Are you with me? He was the leader who led the people, crossed the Jordan and led and, and appropriated the place, the, the land of Canaan, the, the Lord promised Abraham. The land flowing with milk and honey. The land which is the blessing of God. The land which is the rest that the Lord promised his people. And he's saying, I will be with you. Today, the word of God very clearly says in the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. If that be the case, verse 5 and verse 8 and verse 9, not only that, every scripture here is for you. Is for you personally. Is God's assurance to you personally. Sometimes it's also God's warning to you personally. The scripture is not just about blessings. It is all about Jesus Christ. And he tells you how to appropriate a blessing. You need to understand every, the love of God, I, as I told you, or keep telling, love of God is unconditional. There is no limitation. There is no conditions. But the blessings of God are conditional. The greater blessing you and I get is salvation. Or that you do not perish. The word of God says in the book of John chapter 3 verse 16. God so loved the world that he loved everyone. Irrespective of the, of the sinner or irrespective of the saint. He loved everyone. That he gave his only begotten son as a substitutionary sacrifice. That whoso believeth in that sacrifice at the cross of Calvary will not perish. But have everlasting life. So perishing or having everlasting life is conditional upon belief. Giving Jesus is unconditional. Today, my dear brother, my dear sister, you need to understand God loves you so much that he has given his kingdom to you. He has given, he's calling you little children, my ch sons and daughters. I love you so much that I'm willing to share the kingdom with you, with Jesus as the eldest son and all the others as children of the father. Amen. What a, what a privilege. What a privilege, my dear brother. What a privilege. You must be so thankful. Amen.